white sturgeon are living dinosaurs. While they survived so long in the changing world, they now face their biggest challenge. Human activities have led to recruitment failure in several white sturgeon populations in British Columbia, including the population of the Nechaco River. What is recruitment failure? Well, simply put, while there are still adults living in the watershed, not enough of the babies are surviving to grow big enough to have their own babies. If nothing is done, the population will disappear. But thankfully, work is being done to end recruitment failure and help young sturgeon survive to adulthood, including you watching this video. Students learning about sturgeon is one of the ways to help sturgeon survive for the future. Fisheries scientists, First Nations stewards, and community members are working on ways to help. Meanwhile, the Nechaco White Sturgeon Conservation Center is raising the eggs of two-year-old fish, so new fish are still entering the population. In the long term, we hope they will be able to do this in the wild again. At two years old, they are bigger and have a better chance of avoiding being eaten by predators, such as river otters, eagles, osprey, and larger fish. Let's talk about the life cycle of white sturgeon. It's quite interesting. Let's review the whole process, then each step along the way. You'll see how up to one million eggs only lead to a small number of surviving sturgeon. First, the female sturgeon releases her eggs in the river water. Then, the male sturgeon comes in beside her and fertilizes the eggs by releasing some sperm into the water. The eggs fall to the river bottom and stick to rocks and plants. The eggs hatch into larvae. These are the babies. The larvae develop into juveniles. <laughs> These are the kids. Then subadults. These are the teenagers. Then adults. Let's examine that closer. Egg. The female sturgeon will lay up to one million eggs. Of those one million eggs, not all will be fertilized by the male sturgeon. If the eggs aren't fertilized, they do not develop to the next stage of life. The eggs that are fertilized become sticky, which is good, because if they weren't, they would be swept downstream by the river. Some eggs will be able to stick to gravel and rocks to stay put, while others will roll downstream, get covered in sand and silt, or get eaten by predators. Having sticky eggs can also be a problem. If the river bottom is dirty, meaning the rocky bottom is covered with sand or silt, the dirt can stick to the eggs. This is bad for the egg because the egg needs to breathe and if it is covered in sand, it can't breathe, and it dies. Eggs in the hatchery go into special incubation containers that make sure they are getting access to plenty of water. Larvae. The lucky eggs that do get fertilized stick to good habitat and don't get eaten by predators will hatch into larvae. Another example of larvae is tadpoles. Tadpoles are frog larvae. At this stage, the sturgeon larva can swim, but not very well. They do not need to eat because they have a yolk sac full of all the nutrients they need, just like a chicken or frog egg. But they do still need to hide. Otherwise, they'll get eaten by predators or be swept downstream. This will happen to some of the sturgeon larvae. It's important, again, that sturgeon have nice, clean gravels because they hide in the spaces between individual rocks. In the hatchery, there are no rocks, so the juvenile sturgeon are given little balls with plenty of places to hide in. Even though there aren't predators in the hatchery, they will follow instincts to hide that they have developed over thousands of years. Sturgeon larvae will hide out in these spaces until they have absorbed their yolk sacs, and it's time to go find food. 
This takes about 12 days. At this point, they are still very small and need to be careful not to be swept downstream. Juvenile. After about 40 days, young sturgeon are called juveniles. Although they still need to hide from predators, it is time to go further afield to find something to eat. Juvenile sturgeon mostly eat insects that live in the water. These are called aquatic insects. Here are some examples. Now the sturgeon's job is to find enough to eat without getting eaten. Here are some of the animals that like to eat juvenile sturgeon. Only about 0.1% of sturgeon survive to their first birthday. That means for every 1,000 sturgeon, only one will survive to age one. Reasons for this include predation, changes in their habitat caused by Kenny Dam, building cities and towns, farms and cutting down trees, changes in the water, past fishing pressure, population, and climate change. Subadult. Once a white sturgeon reaches about one meter in length, they are considered a subadult. At this stage, they look a lot like an adult, but are not yet reproductively mature, meaning they can't have babies just yet. Adult. The males become adults at approximately 20 to 25 years of age. Females become adults at approximately 40 years of age. Now they are ready to lay and fertilize some eggs and start the cycle all over again. They won't spawn every year though. Females only spawn every three to five years. Males only spawn every other year. They can even reabsorb their eggs if the conditions are not right for them to spawn. In the Nechako River, the only known spawning area is right in Vanderhoof. Want to see that one more time all together? <laughs>